Hello my dear students. I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharambe. I've been teaching anatomy for last 25 years and I love it. This lecture is a part of my central nervous system lecture series where I'm going to talk about the blood supply of spinal cord today. Very easy, very quick, very short video. Okay? But crucial. Remember all tragedies are vascular in nature. This is a medical dictum. If you think about it, you'll realize how fantastically true this is. All tragedies are vascular in nature. So true. Okay. Now let's start the topic. These are all the lectures in spinal cord taken by VB Anatomy. They're all available on YouTube. I want you to go and watch all of them. This is not request. This is instruction to any student who really is sincere about studies. You have to know your spinal cord well. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to understand brain. You have to know your spinal cord well. These are very well curated and thought from your point of view. They're going to be useful for you as a medical student in first MBBS as well as in your third MBBS. So do watch them and share with your colleagues in case you like them. I request all of you to share it with just one student. Okay. If you like it, share it. Okay. I don't care if you put a like there. Don't put a like. But share it with one student. Let somebody else also benefit from the lecture. Okay. All right. So links of all the lectures are given in the description section. Let's dive into blood supply of spinal cord. Right. One note before we go any further. When they say blood supply, they mean arterial and venous. Never only write arterial supply and think that you will get away with it. No. You have, if there is blood going, that blood has to come back. Right. So blood supply is arterial and venous. Let's talk about arterial supply of spinal cord. Bits of this lecture are asked very often in MCQ. So please be prepared from that point of view. Let's begin the story from the vertebral artery, a branch of subtly vein artery. Here you can see how the vertebral artery is ascending to the foraminal transverse area till it finally reaches, passes through the foramen magnum and gives rise to its, its two arteries, anterior spinal arteries, one on the right and one on the left. It also gives rise to posterior spinal arteries, which are sometimes branch of vertebral, sometimes branch of posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay. So now we've got two arteries, anterior spinal, posterior spinal. Posterior spinal can be direct branch of vertebral or it can be a branch of uh, posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So let's enumerate the blood supply of arterial supply of spinal cord. Anterior spinal artery, posterior spinal artery. And because these arteries are actually quite tiny, segmental arteries from all over the vertebral column come in and help to supply the spinal cord. So with segmental arteries, ascending cervical, deep cervical, intercostal, lumbar. Now, I can say the mnemonic is ADIL, but doesn't sound very nice, does it? Okay, whatever, you make it your... In your times, I used to write it as dial, D-I-A-L. But it put, it kind of changes the chronology of the way they are present in the uh, body. It's up to you. Create a mnemonic, but do not forget the names of the four arteries. Hmm? So he write. So here's the anterior spinal. This is the anterior aspect of the spinal cord. Receiving blood supply from the anterior spinal artery. Here's the posterior surface receiving blood supply from posterior spine. You can see how the two anterior spinal arteries are uniting to form one single artery. Posterior spinals are seen to be remaining separate. Now this anterior and posterior spinal arteries are receiving further blood supply from ascending cervical, deep cervical, intercostal and lumbar arteries. Note that the anterior spinal artery receives this additional blood supply and results in creation of a single artery in the midline in the anterior part of spinal cord. This single artery is called anterior longitudinal arterial trunk. One anterior longitudinal arterial trunk. 
but the two posterior spinal arteries do not do not unite to form one artery and therefore there are two posterior longitudinal arterial trunks you can see the there are two posterior longitudinal arterial trunks okay have you got this anterior spinals on the top unite to form an anterior single artery this is called anterior longitudinal arterial trunk receiving supply additionally from the four arteries we have talked about let's discuss this through a section this is a section of spinal cord in the anterior median fissure you can see the anterior longitudinal arterial trunk in the post posteriorly on both the sides just posterior to the posterior root entry zone you see the posterior longitudinal arterial trunks so how many arterial trunks in all three longitudinal arterial trunks are present branches of this now can be seen anastomosing around the spinal cord resulting in a circle of arterial anastomosis called as vasa corona what is it called vasa corona okay now let's take it further enhancing this vasa corona and three longitudinal arterial trunks cannot supply the spinal cord on their own so now you got segmental spinal artery coming in to supply name the segmental spinal arteries one last time ascending cervical deep cervical intercostal and lumbar these enter inside through the intervertebral foramen dividing into anterior radicular artery and posterior radicular artery the radicular arteries help to supply okay anterior radicular helps to supply anterior longitudinal trunk posterior radicular helps to supply posterior longitudinal trunks why trunks because there are two okay so that is the happening at each level let's study this anterior longitudinal arterial trunk once this trunk is formed by vertebral arteries two branches anterior spinal arteries right and left these unite to form the anterior arterial trunk seen here these are helped by the four branches ascending cervical deep cervical intercostal and lumbar resulting in development of a single arterial trunk called anterior longitudinal arterial trunk can you see what i am pointing at throughout the spinal cord this one single arterial trunk is present anteriorly supplying how much of spinal cord supplying anterior two third of spinal cord let's go to posterior now okay posteriorly you know that there are two arterial trunks these are posterior spinal arteries which are descending down helping to form two posterior arterial trunks seen here receiving additional supply from ascending cervical deep cervical intercostal and lumbar you can see these two did you see that these are the two posterior longitudinal arterial trunks supplying the spinal cord from posteriorly such that they supply how much of spinal cord they supply posterior one third of the spinal cord right so let's summarize this anterior two third of spinal cord receives blood supply from anterior longitudinal arterial trunk posterior one third receives blood supply from posterior longitudinal arterial trunk both individually receive additional supply from the anterior and posterior radicular arteries branches of segmental spinal arteries one last question before we move to venous drainage arterial radicularis magna please say it once arteria radicularis magna or artery of adam kivitz what is this artery this is a very important artery which arises directly from the aorta on the left side usually somewhere at the level of lower thoracic upper lumbar it takes origin on the left side passes towards the intervertebral foramen dividing into anterior and posterior radicular arteries as is the rule which land up supplying the lower two third of spinal cord can you imagine the lower two third of the entire spinal cord is supplied blood by this one artery called the artery of adam kivitz very very common mcq question please note it okay so revise it once branch of aorta given off on the left side lower lumbar lower thoracic upper lumbar region 
enters into the spinal cord through the intervertebral foramen, divides into an anterior and posterior radicular branches, which help in blood supply of lower two third of spinal cord. The artery is called arterial radicularis magna or artery of Adam Kivitz. Got it? So let's go to the applied anatomy here. In the upper and lower thoracic region, the anterior longitudinal arterial trunk becomes very narrow. So, if the segmental artery here is compromised, it is very likely that at the level of T4 and at the level of L1, the spinal cord can undergo ischemic necrosis. When does this occur? This can occur when you are actually operating on the aorta itself, when you are doing some nerve block procedures. Or when there is this, the blood pressure is so low that the blood supply doesn't work up. Remember, the anterior arterial trunk supplies two thirds of spinal cord. In case of an anterior lesion of spinal cord, you what happens is called anterior cord syndrome because anterior arterial trunk is affected. What results is called anterior cord syndrome. Anterior part of the spinal cord gets damaged due to the ischemia or aortic dissection. I want you to think that when the aortic wall undergoes dissection, there is no blood supply entering into the posterior intercostal arteries which supply the spinal cord resulting in ischemia. Okay. So, let us now move on to the venous drainage. We learnt about this blood supply arterial supply spinal cord through one anterior arterial trunk to posterior arterial trunk, superiorly formed by anterior spinal and posterior spinal, aided from the side by four arteries, ascending cervical, lumbar, intercostal and the uh, dorsal arteries. So, we also learnt about a special artery called artery of Adam Kivitz. Let us now talk about the venous drainage. Blood aya to blood vapas bhi jayega, correct? So now here you are seeing the section through that region. Here is your spinal cord and you can see that there are six tortuous veins surrounding the spinal cord. One posteriorly in the median sulcus, one anteriorly in the anterior median fissure. Two anteriorly just behind the ventral nerve roots, two posteriorly just behind the dorsal nerve roots. How many? Six. All of these are draining into internal and external vertebral venous plexus. This is internal, this is external vertebral venous plexus, which finally drains into vena cava and azygous veins. Okay. Now, why are we learning all this? Understand students that this vertebral venous plexus consists of veins which have no valves. Right? So, when there is and they are receiving when there is rise in abdominal pressure or when there is cancer and increased pressure abdominally can push the blood to come back into the vertebral region. This is the reason for metastasis of cancer in the vertebrae. This is why you should know that there is a plexus of six veins surrounding spinal cord which are finally draining into Batson's venous plexus consisting of internal and external venous plexuses which in turn drain into the inferior vena cava. Cancer can spread due to valveless Batson's plexus into the vertebral column. This is the external and internal vertebral venous plexus for your information. So, with this we complete the blood supply of spinal cord, arterial as well as venous. Okay. These are all the lectures we have taken in spinal cord. The link for all of them is given in the description section. I instruct all of you to see all these lectures. They are very well curated from point of view of an undergraduate student. Believe me, build your foundation of spinal cord well to be able to understand your brain well. Spinal cord is not just a stepping stone to brain stem. It's your foundation stone. Okay. So, study it well. Okay, students. Um, one little request, like and subscribe to my channel. I know many of you are completely enjoying my lectures. By now, I need more and more of you to subscribe so that I feel encouraged to create more of these videos. Okay. Thank you students. See you across the screen in some other video.